Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Polycab India Limited Q3 FY22 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participants lines will be in listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and zero on your telephone. Please note this conference is being recorded. I'd now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Gandharv Tongya, Chief Financial Officer, Polycab India Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Vikram, and a very good afternoon, everyone. I hope you all are doing well. It is a pleasure to have you on the call. As Vikram mentioned, I'm Gandhar Tongya, CFO at Polycab India Limited. Thanks for joining us today to discuss our Q3 FY22 earnings. During the call, we will be referring to the presentation, financial results, and financial statements which are available on the stock exchanges as well as investor relation web page of our website. It can also be downloaded through the link or QR code on slide 9 of the earnings presentation. From our management team, we have with, our, with us our chairman and managing director, Mr. Indra Jaisinghani. Let me now hand it over to him for his comments. Good afternoon, everyone. We have continuing three quarter, third quarter, despite of challenging business environment. We recorded the highest quarterly top line in the history of the company for the second continuous quarter, which underlined our strategy to be agile, focus on robustic execution, and consistently deliver the best quality of product to our customers. We revitalize a demand generation capability and go to market strategy with a greater focus on emerging India cluster and new age challenges. We also commenced work on the developing a robust ESG framework that will align us with the best global standard and serve guidelines principle for sustainable business practices. I now request Gandhar to take you through our earning presentations. Thank you, Indarvai. Overall, macro environment has been a bit of mixed bag during the quarter. We saw healthy demand in our B2B categories as well as institutional business on the back of an uptick in private capex. Demand visibility over medium to long term has been improving across sectors like real estate, infrastructure, renewable energy, manufacturing. This has led to a strong flow of fresh investment announcement and most of the companies are going ahead with their capital projects despite the ongoing third wave. At the consumer end, while inflation is a bit worrying, lower interest rates coupled with increased income is significantly improving affordability. However, on the flip side, persistent volatility in our key raw materials and fear of lockdown presented some headwinds to improving consumer sentiment. Having said that, gauging the current trade sentiment, we expect economic impact of the current wave to be limited considering less severity of Omicron virus. While there may be hiccups in terms of localized lockdowns, in the first half of Q4, second half is likely to be better. We remain watchful of trends on the ground and our teams are well prepared to come back strongly as a wave proceeds. Overall, we believe our key factor of strong stimulus support economic infrastructure growth coupled with improving execution efficiency through reforms like public procurement rules or the Shakti national plan and favorable consumer demographics and trends will provide a long runway for growth. Our business and portfolio are quite uniquely placed to benefit from this favorable macro development. Before we move on to presentation and financial review, I would like to highlight that the PNL and segment number for the current and prior comparable periods are restated due to divestment of record base in accordance with the applicable Indian accounting standard. All related gains and expenses on divestment are reported under profit from discontinued operations as seen on face of PNL and consolidated financial statements. There are a few exceptional items of last year are also presented in slide 10 of the presentation. Moving on to slide 4. For the quarter ended 31st December 2021, our consolidated revenue grew by 23% year on year and 34% on a two year basis. On quarter and quarter basis, our consolidated revenue grew by 
Q3 is the highest quarterly sales we have ever recorded. EBITDA margins improved sequentially by around 100 bits to 10.7%, led by better operating leverage and price hikes, partly offset by three times increase in AMP spend and input cost pressure. During the quarter, we launched several brand campaigns across TV, digital, and social media platforms. Seminars and influencers meet helped improve awareness among B2B customers, electricians, and contractors, amongst others. We also initiated rural outreach programs through mobile vans where we connected with customers in hinterland. As the business environment normalizes, we will continue with our branding spend. Moving on, other expenses were broadly in line. Overall finance costs at Rs. 78 million and other income at Rs. 216 million were slightly lower. A detailed breakup of our other income finance costs have been provided on slide 13 of our earning presentation. Our profit before tax at Rs. 3.24 billion decreased by 2% while profit after tax at Rs. 2.48 billion increased by 1% year on year respectively. On slide 5, in the first 9 months ended 31st December 2021, our revenue grew strongly by 41% year on year. EBITDA was up by 11% with 9.6% margin. Adjusted fat also grew by 11% year on year. Please note the difference between adjusted and reported fat is highlighted on slide 10. Moving on to segment on slide 6, our wires and cable business continued the sequential momentum. Sales grew by 24% year on year and 38% on a two year basis. Normalizing the sales of a large order, growth was better at 28% year on year in third quarter. Delving deeper into sub segments on a year on year basis, cable grew faster than wires in Q3, supported by strong growth in institutional business. Having said that, on a two year basis, growth is quite broad based. The green shoots were we saw in the month of September in institutional business continued leading to nearly 2.5x higher revenue. We are hopeful of sustaining this momentum in coming quarters. In the quarter, wire business was slightly impacted by high volatility in copper business, copper prices in early November and fears of lockdown impacting the trade sentiment in December. Consequently, the inventory levels in trade were much below normal and overall cash cycle also slowed. Despite these challenges, it is pleasing to note that blended wires and cables volume grew on year-on-year -year basis and also higher than pre-pandemic levels. Export business contributed 8.1% to consumer revenue, but declined by 8% year-on-year, largely on account of one large order in base year. Excluding that, the business posted a healthy 24% year-on-year growth led by Africa, Asia, and Australia. We have put in considerable effort over the past few years in terms of new product development, getting approvals, and penetrating new geographies. This is now materializing as we are seeing many repeat orders from large customers globally. Our focus on achieving double-digit sales contribution target over the medium term for this business remains intact. We have seen a 155 bit sequential improvement in wires and cable segment margins in the quarter driven by price hikes and better operating leverage. Overall inflation in our raw material basket was close to mid single digit, largely emanating from copper and aluminum, while our blended price hikes were slightly higher than that. Considering the continuing competitive intensity in select segments of this business, the improvement in margins is encouraging. On slide seven, our FMEG business grew by 11% year on year, October saw a robust momentum, however, December was impacted by weaker trade and consumer sentiments. Having said that, on pre-pandemic Q3 FY20, the sales are up by a healthy 57%, and market share gains continued across categories. Swan had a slightly subdued quarter, however, growth in light, pumps, and conduit pipes business remained healthy. Switchgear and solar continue to witness strong demand. Our deep dive initiatives on widening distribution net network has started delivering tangible benefits. Work on portfolio optimization, brand architecture, and augmenting influencer management programs is also progressing well. We have started clocking sales from e-commerce channels, and we expect to ramp it up significantly over the next few years. Profitability in this business has been a bit volatile in recent past. 
but this is largely because of a blend of external factors like unprecedented commodity inflation, demand disruption, coupled with a lot of internal changes in terms of creating the right team, right infrastructure, right medium strategy, brand investment, etc., which aligns with our aspiration. We strongly believe this alignment is necessary to achieve the next leg of profitable growth in FMEG, which gets us to the podium. On slide 8, other segment which largely comprises of our strategic EPC business, witness a 21% year-on-year increase in revenue to rupees 745 million. EBIT stood at rupees 106 million, up 24% on year-on-year basis. While many of you may know, but this for the benefit of everyone, I would like to highlight that during the quarter, we divested our entire stake in Riker Bay, which was our wholly owned subsidiary, for an enterprise value of rupees 3.23 billion. Riker played a strategic role in providing us high quality copper rods, which are an input for manufacturing of wires and cables. It started as a JV, but we had subsequently acquired the balance 50% stake when the other partner decided to exit. Consequently, the capacity became quite overwhelming and we couldn't fully utilize this state-of-the-art facility with our own internal requirements. Our limited experience and interest in metal business and a strong focus on optimal capital allocation also suggested it was prudent to divest. So after exploring various strategic options, we believed this deal was a win-win proposition as we simultaneously executed a multi-year tolling arrangement with Indalco, which will ensure our operations and supply chain dynamics remain intact and we continue to deliver higher quality of products to our customers. Consequent to this transition, we have also withdrawn the copper segment. In line with NDF, all Riker business income has been reported as income from discontinued operations in PNL. The PNL and segment numbers are registered for prior comparable period. Our pre tax gain on investment was around rupees 1.24 billion. On the balance sheet side, our financial position continues to remain healthy with net cash position of rupees 6.7 billion. That has reduced sequentially from rupees 2.36 billion as of September 2021 and to just rupees 7.9 billion. Debt to equity ratio is low at 0.02x. On the working capital side, there are, are a couple of things to highlight. One, residual days are at comfortable level of around 40 days. We are seeing decent improvement compared to FY20 and FY21. We will continue to optimize this progressively with the help of channel financing. Second, inventory levels are higher than normal because of two reasons. One, we were anticipating better demand in December end. However, as I highlighted, the trade sentiments went down a bit due to fear of third wave and dealers and retailers reduced their stock levels. And second, we had done some pre-planned procurement for Q4 considering possible impact of Omicron supply chain. Having said that, we are calibrating our plans based on market demand and inventory levels should normalize by next month. As part of transformation project, we are bolstering our organization structure with great tenants across levels and business. We are creating new verticals, function and support teams. This will bring in new competencies and enable us to explore new business avenues, which will make Polycap a future ready organization. Deepak has joined us recently from Tata Group to lead the transformation management office under Project Lead. Tapas joined us from Hebel to head our friends business. If you remember, we had initiated few pilot projects to test the rural market. The results have been heartening. We believe with the right infrastructure, portfolio, and people, we can leverage the immense demand potential of semi-urban and rural India. Accordingly, we have onboarded Deepak Mitra from Crompton to take this initiative further. We are elected to have all the new members joining the Polycap family, and our good wishes are with them. Lastly, Taking our sustainability initiative a notch up, we have initiated a project with an external partner to create our long-term ESG framework aligned with international ESG protocols, guidelines, and standards. This framework will provide a sustainable outlook towards the environment and society alongside business goals. Thank you. With that, I hand it over to operators for q and Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on your telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question.
Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. To ask a question, please press star 1 now. We have a first question from the line of Ravi Swaminathan from Spark Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, sir, my first question is with respect to the uh, uh, volume value mix. So what kind of volume growth we had seen either during the third quarter or nine-month uh, nine number? If you, if you can give that, it will be great. I know multiple products are there, but if you can give a broad sense, it will be great, sir. Thanks, Ravi, uh, for your question. Uh, as you can see, there is a significant amount of growth uh, in value, uh, particularly if, we have, if I were to add color on the volume, uh, mm -hmm. I think there is a slight increase despite having double in rate, uh, predominantly from uh, the business verticals like HDC followed by LDC. On FMEG also, uh, the growth is visible across all the product categories, barring fans, which was slightly subdued. Okay, so volume growth might have been kind of mid single digit or high single digit, or how is it? So, uh... yeah, I would say that uh, most of it is because of volume, uh, most of it is because of value, and only part of it is because of volume. Uh, and within that, HDC is uh, leading the pack, followed by the other businesses in cable and wire. Got it, sir. Got it. And uh, in terms of, uh, say, uh, the demand from, if you can give some color on real estate-led demand, infra-led demand, more color on that, uh, and uh, also urban-rural, the uh, how, how demand is, uh, demand for wires, how it is. So if you can give a broad thought process, that will be great, sir. Yeah, let me split into two or three broad uh, components. Let me talk about first the typical B2B business, uh, as you would know that in first couple of quarters, uh, overall demand from the institutional slide was slightly subdued. Uh, in the current quarter, there is a uptick in the demand and uh, institutional business has recorded uh, almost 150% growth uh, in the revenue, followed by dealers and distributors uh, on all the product categories uh, across all the regions. If I uh, give you color on the export business, uh, uh, there is, a, of course, an element of repeat order, but if I remove Dangote from the base, there is a, uh, overall growth of 24%. And Dangote also, if I'm not wrong, in the last year, December, in the base quarter, it, was, it had almost $20 million of contribution to the top line. And in the current quarter, also there's a $10 million contribution. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, wires, uh, I would say, is uh, slightly uh, less impressive than uh, a typical B2B business in the current quarter. And on the FMEG side, uh, uh, across all the regions, all the product categories, uh, there is a growth barring uh, fans, which is slightly subdued. Fan now contributes almost 35% to our FMEG top line, followed by uh, lighting and loom, which would be roughly around 30% and switch switch gear would be around 10-15% followed by pipe and fitting which would be around 10-12%. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Got it sir. Sir, my one, only question is so basically uh, not only for polycap but for multiple electrical companies is that on, on one side there is uh, uh, the stocks of real estate seeing a very strong recovery but uh, products like wires etc they are not seeing very good traction. Any any reason can you, you can attribute to this so basically as to why there is a dichotomy between real estate growing, but uh, why is not seeing that much traction? So we are seeing a fair amount of growth uh, on LDC and wire side, uh, blended, uh, I would say around 20-25% growth, which we have seen in few of the product categories or SQs within these businesses. Uh, mm -hmm. Overall, uh, uh, you know, availability of credit and softening of interest uh, is also helping the housing sector and building sector. And as we go ahead, it appears that the, in the fourth quarter after Omicron, the overall mm -hmm. private capex would help us in improving uh, the top line of uh, the industry as well as uh, large players like us. Mm -hmm. And affordability, I think, has reached multi-year high, and it should get reflected in the in the demand for uh, cable and wire business in the quarters to come. Got it, sir. Got it. And my final question is with respect to the EBITDA margin. So, uh, uh, what kind of range that we can see in the next fiscal year? So, 
can we go back to double digit kind of margins or uh, are we seeing uh, something similar to what it can have what what it is likely to be this year so if you can give some thought yeah so ravi you know our business um, uh, historically in cable and wire we have generally hovered between 11% to 13% on a sustainable basis uh, when we met in september quarter uh, uh, i had mentioned that slowly and gradually we will start improving on the uh, on the ebitda margin towards the uh, in the second half of the year uh, the likely exit number would be towards the lower end of the ebitda margin which we have seen historically of 11 to 13% and if you dissect our current quarter performance you would notice that the ebitda margins have improved uh, in the third quarter in comparison to second quarter despite the fact that we have invested wherever we should have invested like for example advertisement publicity has increased from 14 crore rupees to 44 45 crore rupees uh, and this said it seems that next year margins would be better than uh, what we have seen in the current quarter but at at the same time i would like to be cognizant of the fact that uh, pandemic is still not over. If there is a, another wave of pandemic and it has significant impact on the business, it could adversely impact the margins. Uh, but by and large, uh, at this stage, it seems that uh, we should be able to have better margins in the years to come, including the next financial year. Got it. Got it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank we you. have next question from the line of Atul Tiwari from City Group. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, sir. And congrats for pretty decent set of numbers in a tough environment. Uh, uh, Gandhar, my first question is on the you know uh, pricing. So all the commodity price increases which have happened over the past uh, year or so, have they been passed on into your pricing structure of both cables and FMG business, or something still remains to be passed on? Hello. Hello. Uh, gentlemen from the management, uh, this is the operator, so we're unable to hear you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, kindly stay connected. We seem to have lost the line of the management. We'll be reconnecting the line. Please stay connected. Thank you. Thank you for patiently holding, ladies and gentlemen. We have the line for the management back in the call. Sir, uh, you may proceed. Thank you. Uh, sincere apologies, Atul and the other attendees. Uh, somehow we lost the connection. Uh, Atul, thanks a lot for your kind words. Uh, uh, I think uh, you wanted to know on the pricing side of it. Uh, what I was saying is uh, in our business on the B2B side, uh, uh, fundamentally on the distribution uh, business, we revise our prices uh, generally on monthly rest after considering two variables. One is the changes in metal prices, uh, copper and aluminium. Second is change in the foreign exchange rate, USJ and other, and this is what we have done in the current quarter as well. On the uh, other side of the business, which is institutional and exports, we generally do it on a uh, back-to-back basis. As you can see, between th second quarter and third quarter, there is almost 70 basis point improvement in contribution margin, which means that we have been able to increase the prices slightly more than the actual increase in the raw material cost at the product basket level. And as I mentioned to Ravi a while back, uh, we believe that in quarters to come, we should be able to improve our margin slowly and gradually. So, so I mean, uh, would it be the right characterization to say that most of the commodity price hikes have already been passed on and from here on, you know, whatever price hikes you take, it will kind of trickle down to the margin number and we will get to the more normal, you know, 11 to 12% kind of margin. Is that right? Uh, 
today's presentation or yeah i would like to just add one uh, element uh, to your understanding that uh, in our business the input cost is not constant it uh, undergoes a change uh, multiple times in a year uh, as you know uh, because copper and aluminum is traded on lme and that is where it is a moving price but generally from your understanding point of view give and take a few basis point here and there uh, we believe that we should be able to pass on the increase in uh, cost of input cost to our end customer and slowly and gradually we should be able to improve on margin both at contribution level as well as EBITDA level and slightly on uh, uh, on a on a long term view you know this already as well that we are working on project lead with the help of boston consulting group and there are several enablers which are in place uh, once uh, those uh, levers are used we should be able to improve our uh, profitability both for b2b and b2c however it will take a while to fully uh, you know achieve the true potential of these levers okay and and my second question is on uh, you know the channel so how many dealers and distributors you would have currently on cable uh, and wire side and on smg side and uh, and what proportion of those are currently covered under channel financing is you know scheme and how many or how much more can be potentially covered under channel financing okay uh given take some numbers we are around 4100 dealers and distributors in our family uh, 50% of them are on smeg uh, in terms of value uh, advance plus tena finance put together in cable and wire we would be around 70% of our top line uh, and in smeg this year it has improved uh, reasonably well and we are in late 40s or almost just shy of 50% uh, theoretically speaking this number can go right up to 80s and 90s and that is where fmg channel financing penetration should improve uh, in quarter to come and there is upside which is possible in cable and wire business as well okay great and my final one is on you know obviously uh, we have seen across the industry you know some tapering down of demand you know in december and you know after diwali got over so how are things right now qualitatively i mean do you see demand bouncing back you know in fourth quarter you know from the retail category that you have uh, or it is still taking some time so if you could share some broad qualitative color on that definitely absolutely uh, you're right uh, so the uh, uh, second half of the quarter got impacted predominantly the uh, you know last two three weeks of the uh, of december one got impacted because of omicron and pandemic uh, if i were to take a view today uh, sentiments are positive so in the month of december uh few of the dealers decided to reduce the inventory level in the channel uh, uh as of today uh, the things have improved uh, dealers and distributors are inching back to normalcy um, and you know this data already that uh, omicron uh, wave in most of the large cities has already peaked or about to peak in next few days uh, at this stage it seems that the second half of the current quarter should be better than the first half of the current quarter and uh, overall uh, you know macro uh, elements like uh, uptake in private capex should also help us in uh, improving and augmenting the top line of uh, the company on cable and wire side on uh, on the b2c side as well as on dealer distribution any which ways we are focusing in improving our presence in all the addressable markets adding our dealers and distributors and all these initiatives should also help us in improving the top line so to answer your question uh, the sentiment got impacted in the month of december adversely a bit but as of now things have started improving okay thank you that thank you thank you we have next question from the line of aditya bagul from tata mutual fund please go ahead Uh, thank you uh, uh, good evening gandharvan team and congratulations on on a good set of numbers and a challenging times um gandharv uh, a couple of questions from my end firstly uh, with regards to the b2b business right we've seen a sharp recovery uh, can you help us understand what are some of these uh, end user industries that are driving this growth uh, and and uh, how what is your outlook over a period of the next one year especially when it comes to the uh, b2b part Thanks, Aditya. Thanks a lot for your kind words, and uh, great to uh, see you on the call, joining from another group, uh, company. Uh, on Thank the B2B side, I, 
as I mentioned a while back, uh, predominantly the improvement in the demand is emanating from uh, private capex. Uh, as I mentioned to uh, Ravi a while back, uh, pr uh, institutional business has recorded 150% growth, uh, which is a meaningful number uh, in our B2B business. On the dealer side, there are several sectors where we have seen uptick in demand, uh, whether it is coming from real estate, infrastructure, renewable energy, or manufacturing. But uh, I would say it is broad based and it's coming from most of geography. So it's not that only one particular region of the country is contributing uh, to the demand. It's coming from all the geography. And that is where we have been able to also record a decent uh, volume growth, even if uh, uh, we consider Dangote in the base. Sure. Uh, Gandhar, uh, just to prod this a little further, uh, just if you can help me understand, uh, is there a, a chunky nature to this uh, B2B sort of institutional demand uh, or is this more industrial capex led uh, demand? There is no particular one industry or sector which is contributing to this demand. I would say it is broadly broad based. Uh, I think the private capital spenders are not shying away from making the commitment and incurring the cost and which is benefiting uh, uh, us uh, in terms of the improved performance in the top line. Understood. Uh, thank you for that, Kandar. Uh, my second question is, is just to trying to understand uh, are the premiumization trends, especially in our FMEG business. Uh, so can you just uh, throw a little light on how you see uh, some of our premium products, right, uh, Levana or Home, and how do these fit into our uh, project leap uh, over a period of the next three to five years? Yeah, uh, premiumization is an important focus area as part of project leap. We are working on several elements. Uh, uh, one is to ensure that we have the right product available in our product portfolio to meet the premiumization. Second is we should have right GTM and dealers and distributors who can cater to the end demand or end consumer. And that has helped us in uh, slightly improving the overall contribution of premiumized product to our top line. Fan is hovering between 25 to 30%. Uh, Purocort uh, fan, um, uh, which was internally uh, innovated, has also helped us in improving the overall premiumization agenda within the fan business. And similarly for lighting, uh, we have uh, recorded uh, a growth in premiumization on downwriters and others. Home, Silvan and Smart, uh, these are the areas where we are still working. Uh, I would expect that in the next fiscal and that in the second half of the next fiscal, we should have some meaningful numbers coming to our PNL through home and Silvan and IoT. And that remains a focus area for us. I, overall, the idea is to have a balance of premiumization as well as regular products so that we have uh, right EBITDA and EBIT margins in the B2C businesses and we are able to improve the margin from the current levels to almost 12% uh, by FI26. Understood. Thank you so much uh, for those answers, Gandhan, and best of luck to you and the team for uh, the ensuing quarters. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have next question from the line of Nitin Aroda from Axis Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, just first question on the demand side, do you uh, take it that value growth is also the large proportion, large can be 99% as well. Uh, but just talking in the last two quarters, uh, you know, uh, last quarter on a base of 5% decline, we did 44% growth, and the copper prices were up roughly 40-45%. Uh, sorry, are you there? Hello. Operator, can you hear us? Uh, yes, sir, we can hear you. Uh, Mr. Nitin Arora, uh, would you like to complete your question? Uh, so we seem to have lost the line of Mr. Nitin Arora. 
Uh, we take the next question from the line of Charanjit Singh from DSP Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Gandaji. Can you hear me? Uh, uh, yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, if you can just help us understand one in terms of the quantum of price hike, exactly, you know, how much you would have taken in cables and wires. And uh, if you have to you know, look at it from a nine months perspective, volume growth in cables and wires, what it was, uh, you know, if you can give the figures here. Yeah, sure, Charanjit. Uh, as I mentioned to Atul and Ravi, uh, most of the increase is coming from uh, value. There's some uh, uh, contribution coming from increase in volume. And if I uh, even consider Dangot in the base, uh, there is some improvement in uh, volume. In terms of price hikes, uh, uh, in, the second, in the second quarter, there was some impact on the contribution and that is why there was a contraction contribution margin. In the third quarter, uh, there is almost improvement of 70 bips. Uh, the uh, raw material cost at the product basket level increased by mid single digit. And uh, the price hike we have taken is slightly more than that, and which is what is getting reflected in expansion of contribution margin by 70 bips point. And we'll continue to take pricing action to offset the increase in the input cost in the quarters to come. So if we have to you know, compare the price action, what we would have taken versus the industry, uh, is there a gap between them? Are you trying to ask that whether the price hike they have taken is in line with the industry? Is that the question? Or is yeah, you... yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in, in all fairness, we are the largest uh, manufacturer uh, of uh, cable and wire uh, in the country. We are uh, the market leader, price leader, and of course the quality leader. And uh, and I think we have acted like a market leader in the current quarter. We have taken the price hikes which were required to be taken to ensure that we are able to offset the input cost. It's quite possible few of the market participants have followed what we have done. Uh, we, there could be some aberration where the market participants of the years have not necessarily followed what uh, we have done. But by and large, we have taken the price hike which we felt was necessary to offset the increase in input cost. Okay, so uh, just another question on the volume growth perspective. So as we are entering into Q4, you know, generally it is more uh, infrastructure construction heavy, and uh, even from next year perspective, there is a thought process that uh, maybe the activity on the government infrastructure side could, should continue to remain strong. So any thoughts? You know, what is the kind of volume growth which you could see in cables uh, and wire side separately? So, Charanjit, you know us, uh, we don't give guidance uh, on, uh, on, uh, on future performance. If I were to provide you a long-term guidance, uh, we, uh, we are fully committed to project LEAP uh, agenda, whereby we want to double our revenue in five years from now, by fiscal 26, uh, and which would mean uh, that uh, a 9,000 crore rupees of top line of fiscal 21 would be 20,000 crore rupees by fiscal 26. And it will come from all the businesses, both B2B as well as B2C. Okay. So, uh, Gandhar, just lastly on the FMEG front, so we have, you know, uh, uh, built a very strong team uh, and, uh, uh, you know, we are uh, getting onto a journey where we expect to grow much more faster than the industry. So, uh, you know, uh, from FMEG perspective, uh, we have seen that uh, the growth uh, has not been as strong as what we have seen for the you know other larger players. So, if you can touch upon uh, you know how this journey is panning out from FMEG perspective and this new team, uh, when do you see you know uh, their activity starting to pick up? So, just on the FMEG journey, if you can give some more color on the future perspective, how do you plan to ramp up? Yeah. On two-year basis, if I see FMEG top-line performance, we have registered a growth of 57%, which would roughly mean 25-30% uh, annualized growth. Uh, in terms of uh, achieving the true potential of project LEAP agenda, there are several enablers on which we are working. One which I very briefly touched upon in the opening remark is having the right uh, resources in the management team and that is where we have invested heavily in getting the best of the talent of the industry. 
in the last quarterly call, I had updated all of you that Mr. Vivek Sharma has joined us from Panasonic. He was the MD of Panasonic and after superannuation, he has joined us as Deputy Managing Director. Tapas has joined us from uh, Hevels and he is leading our friends' business. Similarly, there are other uh, team members who have joined from other large companies like Crompton and other large B2C uh, players. These uh, management professionals with the help of BCG are in the process of revisiting and revi revising and revitalizing the product portfolio, GTM, uh, geographical expansion and uh, augmentation of dealers and distributors. We have already improved penetration in few geographies in the current nine months. Once we implement all the, all the items which we have identified in the blueprint, uh, I would expect that we would be easily be able to achieve the top line of B2C business by FY26. Also, we would be also be able to have meaningful improvement in the bottom line. I think we'll have to give some time to the new team members who have recently joined our family. And uh, post that, we should be able uh, to get to the number which we want to achieve as part of Project LEAP. OK. Uh, great. Thanks, Vendor, for taking the question. I'll circle back in the queue. That's all for my side. Thank you, Charanjeet. Thank you. We have next question from the line of Swatvik Jen from Generation, Generational Capital. Please go ahead. Ah, yeah, uh, thank you. So I had a couple of questions. So first is, uh, I guess you are in investment mode in the FMCG business. Uh, however, there are any internal ROHI targets uh, at the business level? And secondly, you had briefly told about uh, how you are you know, passing on the inflation uh, to the end consumer, so if you could throw uh, some more light on it so across the verticals. Sorry, I missed the first part of the question. I think let me attend the second part and then you can repeat the first part. Uh, I think the second part is uh, how have we uh, passed on the increase in in the input cost uh, to the end customer and if that's the understanding is right of the question, the answer is uh, for the dealers and distributors, we reset or revisit our list price on a monthly rest and that is what we have done even the current quarters or almost all the increases in the uh, in the input cost have been passed on to the end customer for the exports as well as uh, institutional businesses generally on back-to-back -back basis and that is where we have been able to pass on the input cost increase as well to the uh, to the counterparty or to our customer if that uh, if uh, that uh, that answers your second part of the question, I would request you to just repeat okay. the first part. Yeah, yeah, that was helpful. The first part was basically so we uh, you know get that the FMEG business uh, that is in a, a scale up mode. Uh, internal return and capital employed uh, targets uh, at the FMEG level uh, as such. Yeah, I think you are trying to understand our ROSI target for the FMG business. If there is a correct understanding, uh, objective, is to, right. objective is to improve profitability for all the businesses as well as, uh, you know, have better capital allocation, uh, including for FMG or B2C business. As of now, as you know, there are two levers uh, to improve ROSI. One is better profitability and second is better capital allocation. As far as better profitability is concerned, uh, we are targeting to get to around 12% of margins by FY26 uh, and we are taking all the required steps to uh, achieve that. The second is on capital allocation. Slowly and gradually we are uh, increasing the utilization of our factories in FMEG as well as in cable and wire. Uh, if I were to illustrate this with the help of one example is fan business where our existing facility is almost uh, being fully utilized and we are in the process of setting up another facility which should be operational uh, sometime uh, in the first quarter of the next fiscal and uh, that will also help us in augmenting the top line as well as the profitability. So we'll continue to make efforts to improve the profitability of the B2C business and ensure that our assets are sweated to get better returns. 
So, so that was helpful. Uh, all the best for the future. Thank you, Satwe. Thank you. We have next question from the line of Devansh Nigotia from SIMPL. Please go ahead. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so the, uh, it's, it might be a repetitive question, but uh, when you're looking at the real estate demand, uh, and in, against that, when you're looking at the demand from real estate ancillaries like uh, fan lighting and retail wiring, uh, it, it, they are actually, um, it doesn't add up. So if you can help us understand how does this lead and lag effect play out? Uh, because ideally, is it that con currently the existing inventory in real estate is being sold and uh, uh, the new construction is yet to pick up in a big way? Uh, so if uh, if you can just share your thought process of how is it your interaction with the customer then how is actually the demand shaping up? Uh, yeah, sure, uh, Devansh. Uh, as you have noticed that um, in all the businesses we have recorded a significant amount of growth uh, in cable and wire as well as in FMEG. FMEG on a two-year basis has recorded a 57% of growth in top line and similar numbers are there in uh, cable and wire businesses. Of course, the percentage are different because of higher base. So I would not say that we are not able to see an uptick in demand or there is a disconnect between the uh, between the real estate revival as well as uh, growth in our sector. Uh, but we need to look at the customer cycle in its entirety because few of our product categories uh, of our products are used toward the end of the construction phase and that is where we'll have to deep uh, dive into the greater details of the cycle of real estate and correlate with our industry or our company's performance. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, that's it from the sector. Thanks a lot. Thanks very much. Thank you. We have next question from the line of Anirudh Joshi from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, so thanks for the opportunity. So just one strategic question. Um, uh, the FMEG business that we are working on, we are, uh, while we are doing completely uh, excellent, uh, this is a highly competitive business, means fans and all these are relatively far more penetrated uh, categories. So here the uh, growth is to gain market share and which is uh, again relatively uh, uh, a bit tough task. So uh, what is the management's thought process on something businesses, something like kitchen appliances where there are not many uh, big players and even the top five players have uh, less than 40, 45% market share. And uh, again the segment is also pretty uh, fast growing uh, segment. Considering polycaps, strong brand distribution uh, uh, means uh, what is our thought process on that uh, as a segment? I think it's a great question, uh, Anirudh. In the boardroom as well as management team, we have deliberated on this several times. Uh, let me give you two perspectives. If you want to visualize all the products which Polycab is manufacturing and offering to the end customer, and compare with a typical electrical hardware store, you would be able to see almost all the products. When we want to move away from this product category to something like kitchen equipment, there are two or three things which are additionally required to be considered. One, the, the kitchen equipment are not expected to be channeled through electrical hardware stores. Second, the target audience is different. In electrical hardware stores, generally men of the house would be involved uh, in the decision making. Whereas in the kitchen equipment, uh, the lady of the house would have a say. And the last thing is the brand polycare which we have today not necessarily uh, would go well uh, and which is a matter of discussion deliberation even internally with the kitchen appliances. So the current thought process for the time being is to ensure that we have complete coverage of all the electrical products and as part of project LEAP, explore the exigencies and then monetize those exigencies as we implement project LEAP's initiative between now and FY26. Uh, okay. Okay, and uh, what are the products, uh, if you can say, that we would be focusing on uh, in FMCG apart from fans and maybe geysers? Uh, 
So we have several SMEG products already available. We have fans and uh, water heaters. We have light and lube. We have switches and switchgears. We have conduit pipes. We have a bit of agro. Uh, and there are some uh, adjacencies which are being explored, but nothing on the kitchen equipment side as of now. Okay, and uh, about air coolers or irons, etc., those kind of products, uh, or uh, any any uh, means uh, most of the other companies are not even in uh, kitchen appliances, but still continue to do uh, to sell these products. So, uh, any plans on completing this portfolio? So there are uh, uh, some products which are available in the product category that you mentioned. Uh, but I, as I mentioned that these are adjacencies and these are being explored and we'll continue to do that. But if you go back to my earlier comment, the idea is to first cover all the electrical products uh, and then uh, explore if at all we have to uh, go beyond electrical products. Okay. okay, so last question. Uh, you uh, said in the opening speech that multiple new professionals joined the company. So what are the key KRS that they will be working on over the next two to three years? So is it uh, uh, like uh, minimum one to two percent market share gain in each of the product categories that we are working on or is it improvement in the profitability margins or uh, and uh, uh, means what are the basically three to four key uh, reasons on which they would be focusing uh, mainly their uh, time and investments? The new professionals who have joined the organization as well as the current leadership team is totally focused on only one initiative or agenda which is Project LEAP. Uh, the objective is to achieve 20,000 crore rupees of top line, improvement in profitability and there are several enablers uh, to achieve uh, this uh, vision. Um, um, for example, improvement uh, in our uh, dealers and distribution base improvement in GTM, expansion uh, and penetration of few geographies where we don't have meaningful presence, uh, improve exports. But uh, if I were to uh, summarize uh, and give you inputs in a single statement, it's only project leap agenda, which is what being targeted by all of us in the leadership team of Polycare. Okay. Okay. Sure, sir. This is helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Anirudh. Thank you. We have next question from the line of Srinidhi Karlekar from HSBC. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. So, Tindra, I just want to know uh, 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 how far has company reached in terms of human capital addition? I see very interesting hires from the industry for new as well as existing roles. I just want to know how far has the company reached? Is the top team already in place for most of the roles? that have been identified under Project Leap? Uh, I would say as part of the phase one of Project Leap, most of the senior resources have been already hired. I would not, uh, I do not think that at this stage under the phase one, we need to do any additional significant hiring uh, for the top leadership. However, having said that, at the middle level and lower level, will continue to make investment uh, and that is required for initiatives like increase in overall dealers and distributors, further penetrating the geographies where we don't have meaningful presence, uh, uh, and so on and so forth. Right. And second question, otherwise on uh, the business from state distribution utilities, any color and how, how has been recovering that part of the market uh, and also uh, how much of uh, companies' cable and wire business uh, directly or indirectly comes from state distribution utilities? We don't directly deal with government entities, uh, generally speaking. The government's contribution to our top line uh, directly would be less than 2.5%. Two, two uh, of course, our dealers and distributors serve uh, uh, these companies. Uh, there is some improvement, uh, but uh, since this is a secondary cell, I will not necessarily have adequate color to give to you. Uh, but to answer your question, from the primary cell point of view, we don't directly have uh, significant government uh, uh, supply to government orders. Uh, but uh, just when I'm wondering, uh, would you have some color on indirectly how much would it be? Uh, 
uh, I think there is some improvement uh, uh, over the period, but since this is uh, secondary, uh, uh, it is uh, it's difficult to give you a precise color, but generally speaking, power distribution reforms uh, have helped and will continue to help us in, uh, in improving the demand at the industry level. Fair enough. Thank you for answering my question and all the very good. Thank you, Srinidhi. Thank you. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Gandharva Tongya for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you, everyone, for taking out time uh, and attending this call. In case if there are any unanswered questions, please write uh, to us at investor.relations at polycap.com, and we would be extremely pleased to attend your queries and uh, provide you clarification. Stay safe and take care. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Polycab India Limited, that concludes this conference call. Thank you for joining with us. You may now disconnect your lines.